Hello friends, welcome to Pioneer of Success, an online free educational institute. So we are continuing with the chemistry series and this is the part 2 video of Stereo Chemistry. We have already uploaded the part 1 video where we have discussed about the RS nomenclature. So here we will be talking about the Stereo Chemistry as a whole and in brief. So the topics which we are going to cover today are chirality, chiral carbon, enantiomers, diastomers, absolute configuration, relative configuration and optical activity. So I hope by the end of this video you will be you will be aware of all these terms and you will be able to use this for your further study. So this video is basically helpful for WB, JE, WB, JE, WB, WBCS examination and also for JE mains and JE advanced. So we have made the video such a way that uh, for learning purpose, for learning chemistry, these videos are helpful but once you are done with this video then we will make separate parts for WBCS, for WBJE, for JE advanced and mains like for JE advanced we will be preparing for MCQ problems and those videos also will be uploading shortly so for learning the subject these videos are important and those are main for this only ok so let us start uh, this official representation of molecule and uh, this is sp3 carbon you all need to know if a molecule is sp3 then it has tetrahedral structure and the bond angle is 109 degree 28 minutes approximately this is the 3d drawing and uh, this is the representation in Fisher projection though how do we represent i'll tell you so what we did here suppose this is the representation in three dimensional space those two are on the plane, this uh, not a yeah, plane of the yeah, computer, this uh, solid lines represent above the plane and this hashed line or dashed line represents the below the plane. Now what we did, we are just rotating it along this direction. So I will tell you what we did, we are rotating along this direction. So what will happen, the three, this molecule was on the plane of the computer, if I rotate in this direction it will come up and the 4 would also little bit move and this uh, 2 also be moving in the backward direction so what actually happens this uh, happens uh, this 1 comes here 2 comes here and as you can see here we are going this direction so 4 is coming here and 3 is coming here so once we are done with this then simply remove this solid and hatch lines and you will be getting this structure and this is the Fisher representation so some other representation to represent molecules so this is a simple methane ethane molecule there are two carbon atoms you can see here those are two carbon you can represent it by carbon 1 and carbon 2 and this is the flying wedge formula where we actually represent three dimensionally uh, this dashed line represent below the plane this uh, orange line represents above the plane and this is the uh, shaw horse representation where we represent by two only by lines this is the Newman projection and this is the Fisher projection now uh, how to convert from the Newman to the Fisher in Newman projection you have to make in, in eclipse conformation now what is conformers I will tell you in short the conformer means suppose we have a CC bond and this is a single bond then what happens this bond can rotate if we apply energy by this uh, energy taking this energy it can rotate around one another so what happens uh, when it rotates it gives several conf conformers that means several orientation and each orientation may have separate energies and all these orientational things are called conformers so you may have infinite number of conformers when the bond rotates so you and uh, the staggered means uh, sorry the eclipse mean when the molecules are very close to each other you can see here these are front carbon and this uh, big circle represents the back carbon so these molecules are very close to each other and those are called eclipsed configuration so that we will discuss in a separate video where we will be talking about conformers so this is a Fisher representation this is the back carbon you can see here this red ball representing one ligand and this is a black one representing another carbon the ligands attached to this carbon actually Okay, so now we uh, divide the um, stereo isomers. Now, for the time being, we divide it by constitutional and orientational 
of atoms in space. Now, whenever I'm talking about space, that represents a stereo isomer. So, the stereo isomers are basically isomers when which have different orientation in space, and because of that orientation, that gives rise to different isomer isomers. Okay, and the constitutional isomer means that the where the connectivity are different. So, actually. Bonds are being broken and generated because of this. The orientation different, and those are called constitutional isomers. We'll be citing examples uh, as we proceed. So this is a one type of uh, one kind of stereo isomers. Why do we call it stereo isomer? Because you can see here there are two ligands that is CH3, or you can say the bulk ligands, bulk compared to this hydrogen. These two are in the same side of the this is a planar molecule because you know this CC double bond means this is sp2 and you know sp2 carbon means planar molecule so those two ligands are in the same side and in the same side this is called cis 2 butene and uh, this is trans 2 butene because these two molecules so these two ligands are away from each other that this is called trans so this is the cis trans nomenclature and uh, this is a constitutional uh, you can see one butene so this is a constitutional isomer of this. This is two butene. So what you can see, the double bond is between one. I'll show you. This is a carbon number one, two, three, four. So there is a double bond between two and three, and uh, for that we call it cis two butene. But here, what happens? I'll show you. This is also butene. But here the double bond is between 1, 2 carbon. 1, 2, 3, 4. So that is why it is called 1 butene. So these two molecules, 1 butene and 2 butene, both have same molecular formula, but uh, the connectivity is different. That means initially it was a double bond between 2 and 3 carbon. Here uh, we have a double bond between 1 and 2 carbon. That is why these two, this and this, called constitutional isomer and this constitutional isomer again has two different stereo isomers okay now uh, you can see here this is tied in molecule and uh, there are several constitutional isomers this tied in and this cuban both have same molecular formula but uh, the total structure is different it is cubic structure and this is tied in totally different structure but they have same number of uh, atoms that is molecular formula is same okay so now we come to differences between conformer and configuration isomers again i uh, i'll tell you that which we have already discussed conformer means suppose we have a cc bond this bond can rotate because of the availability of energy now during rotation it will take several orientation and each orientation would represent a molecular conformer conformational isomers so this happens because of the cc rotation so here you can see the differences conformation of molecule arise due to the free rotation around the single bond but configuration is a permanent spatial arrangement of molecule which can only be changed by bond breaking and bond making procedures so as i have already mentioned one there is one butene and two butene those two are constitutional isomers and uh, these two uh, to, uh, these two are not interconvertible to make uh, from one to another you need to break bonds you need to make new bonds so that's why it's called configurational okay so in conformal these are called actually stereo isomer which can interconvert at low temperature and the conversion energy is less than 60 kilojoule per mole whereas the uh, energy difference between the isomers of configuration is more than 100 kilojoule per mole so this is a this is a basic criterion for actually detecting the conformer, conformers and this configurational isomers okay okay for stereo uh, okay so yeah for spectroscopic analysis of the conformers they should be subjected to a lower temperature which can freeze or slow down the rapid flipping between two or three uh, inter actually interconversions so what does it mean suppose you want to you have three different conformers but at very low temperature they are interconvertible so what you need to do you need to freeze them so that a particular conformer we can fix it and then if we take the spectroscopic image then we can get differences between these conformers okay 
so now we come to chirality so i have already discussed in the video one what is chiral carbon suppose you have a carbon it has four ligands a b c d if all the ligands are different then it is called chiral carbon and this is called chiral center or stereo center so i guess this thing is now clear okay so now we come to chiral molecules so uh, molecules mean again four different ligands you can see four different colors it presents for different ligands okay so this is a stereo center you can see here this is a methyl group this is ethyl group this is hydrogen and this is cyanide group so four different groups are attached to this carbon that's why this carbon is stereo carbon again one more example this is hydrogen this is again uh, your and separate group this is a separate group this is a separate group that's why it's a this is methane this is hydrogen this is a separate and this is a separate that's why stereo center again we have two stereo centers here okay so one more one most important line i have written here presence of a stereo center is neither necessary nor sufficient for the requirement of the molecule for chirality what does it mean suppose you have a stereo center if they give non superimposed mirror image then they are called enantiomer so i'll tell you the significance of this line later on but for the time being we just focus on this molecule so this is a molecule it has for different ligands chlorine bromine fluorine and hydrogen so this is a chiral center or stereo center it has a mirror image which is not superimposable if these two mirror images are non superimposable then those two are called enantiomers so again i am repeating if they have they have mirror images and those two mirror images are non superimposable then it is called enantiomers for example our left hand and right hand these two are non superimposable and those are actually an kind of enantiomer but here you can see these two mirror images images are identical and they can be superimposed on one another that's why it is identical but here these two are different they are not superimposable and that's why these two are enantiomer so i guess things are clear one more important thing uh, many times uh, there are no chiral center but still molecule uh, is chiral and this happens because of the bond strain hindered rotation that means even though this molecule has cc carbon bond but the rotation free rotation is restricted because of the this bulky groups and that leads to the chirality so these are few exceptional examples you need to know you actually you need to memorize it okay so then one more thing i skip this things these are not important yeah one more important thing is meso compound suppose you have a molecule which has two different chiral centers for the for example this two carbon both of them have two chiral centers so this is a chiral center this is a chiral center but what happens there is a plane of symmetry if any symmetry is there then the compound is not chiral it's an acryl molecule so here there is a plane of symmetry even though the two molecules are individually chiral leading to acryl molecule so this molecule is acryl acryl so you need to understand this things so i guess the thing is clear which is a meso compound now optically active or optically inactive now what happens if the, we have two enantiomers they have different optical rotation now what is optical rotation suppose if have a mixture of molecule and you pass one plane polarized light then it has a tendency to rotate the plane of that polarized light it, if this phenomenon happens then it is called polarization now i'll tell you one thing this is a molecule it created acn that is giving rise to two different stereo isomers uh, this is okay uh, we can yeah these are two different isomers that is uh, those are formed after the reaction and they have say 50% 50% now i'll tell you what is optical activity so what happens this is a light we make it plane polarized by necessary arrangement so this is a plane polarized light and suppose a molecule is placed here which is chiral now what happens when the light passes to the molecule this molecule has 
an ability to change the plane of this polarized light and how much change it takes place that can be observed from this analyzer and this changing of plane can only take place if the molecule is chiral and there are two kinds of rotation that is a clockwise rotation and anti clockwise rotation if the rotation is clockwise then it is called dextro rotatory you should understand you should memorize it and it is represented by d is a dextro rotatory and if it is moving in the counter clockwise direction then it is levorated moving means the movement of the plane polarized light if it is counter clockwise then it is called levo rotatory represented by l okay so for optical rotation what are the parameters that influence the particular phenomenon and those are your concentration of the sample this is one parameter length of the sample cell that means suppose this is a chamber so this length is important and wavelength of the incident light the light which we are putting what is the wavelength of that light that is important solvent is important and also the temperature so here we define one specific rotation and that is alpha by lc what is alpha here alpha is optical rotation how much rotation takes place actually a is the path length c is the concentration now Uh, a few things you need to know that enantiomers are chiral, diastereomers are not chiral. Uh, pure sample of a single enantiomer is optically active. If enant, if suppose you guess, uh, we take 50 percent of R molecule and 50 percent of S molecule, then it is called a racemic mixture, and racemic mixture does not respond. That means either you put one enantiomer or to different proportion of two enantiomers then only you will see the rotation so i have cited few okay so now uh, relative configuration dl nomenclature okay how do we in sugar chemistry basically we represent this dl nomenclature now this carbon is important the carbon which is attached to this h2oh that carbon is important and uh, if your electronegative molecule is in the left side so two things you need to know this ch2h group the carbon near to this ch2h group and if electronegative atom is attached in the left side then it is called l if it is attached in the right side then it is called d so that is the dl nomenclature you i guess you understood i'll cite more example yeah this is a long molecule so This is the CH2. You should look for this CH2H group and the nearest carbon. This is the carbon. Then OH group is in the left side. It's electronegative. It is in the left side. That means the L glucose. If it is in the right side, then it is D serine. This is serine molecule. So I guess DL nomenclature is clear to you. Okay. So these things we can skip. I have already covered TL nomenclature, RS nomenclature is already mentioned in the last video, so I am not going in detail. So those are important things about stereochemistry. But again, we'll make another video where we'll be discussing the rest of the things. And I assure you, if you go through these three videos, you will complete the stereochemistry. And uh, we'll also suggest the name of the books where you know, we can actually. Uh, look for the materials and if you are preparing for a serious examination you need to study book so with this uh, video we will also suggest the name of the book so that you prepare well for your examination and uh, if you like this video please share it on social media and kindly subscribe to our channel and uh, if anybody wants to join our team we always welcome them because we are looking for an expansion thank you very much